Alrighty, good evening, everybody. We're all excited to be here. Hope you're excited to be here. Welcome to the teaser after show, the first episode this season of Game And it's early. We're so hyped to be here. You so hyped? So hyped. Okay, there you go. So hyped. <laughs> good. <laughs> you I think we're all just stunned. Yes, duh. Yeah, that's a pretty good reaction right there. So, uh, we're happy to be here. We're happy to uh, have this opportunity to do this. Uh, but first, we want to say a few things on behalf of GameSense. First, GameSense wants to thank the GameSense sponsor, Symbotic. Symbotic is a warehouse automation company. They do a lot of cool stuff. They were actually in the Wall Street Journal today. So if you get that paper, look at it. Or if you go on the internet, look at it. Um, and they're a great sponsor of, Symbotic, of uh, GameSense. And they let us do all the cool things that we do, including this show. Also, we will obviously want to thank... Uh, Frank, who's in the Twitch chat, so if you're watching live on Twitch, he's in the chat, say hello. Uh, and everybody else at first for helping us to do this show, and we're real excited to be here. Now I'd like to introduce our host for the night. First up is Ty Trembley from Team 319. Hey, everybody. Next up is Evan Morrison from Team 5803. Howdy. And then we've got Ruth Toomey. She's from Team 319 as well. Hello. Uh, I'm Francis O'Rourke. I'm a member of Team 190. And our first very special guest today is Emma Dumont. Emma, tell us a little bit about you yourself. Hey, what's up, you guys? Um, my name's Emma, and I'm a FIRST Robotics Competition mentor and former student. So FIRST Obsessed, just like everyone else. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's great. I also hear that uh, among your many talents, you have done or do roller derby. I do play roller derby. Well, I used to play roller derby. Now I'm taking a break because, you know, who wants broken bones? Um, but yeah, a lot of roller derby in my past. Awesome. Sure. That's, I, that sounds pretty awesome. I like how, you know, you're an actress and you do all this great stuff. And the thing that everybody goes wow about is the fact that you do roller derby right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's so out there. But acting, you know, in Hollywood. Well, no, sure. Mostly course, because I would never, I would never have the guts to do it myself. I, mean, I don't know. Like, like we all... people go, "Oh wow," about robotics because they just don't understand it at all. They're like, yeah. "What is that?" Mm -hmm. But I guess they're supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all build robots for fun and nonprofit, so <laughs> of course, roller derby would be a little bit interesting to the rest of us. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, right. and to be honest, sometimes during robotics I get pretty stressed out, and I wouldn't mind going around in a circle and just beating the crap out of some people every now and then. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we hope that everybody who's watching today uh, is excited to be here, too. And we want to hear what you guys have to think of, first, Steamworks. We know the name of the game. It's out. All the stuff is out. If you haven't seen it already, check it out on first Facebook and YouTube. We want to hear what you have to say about it. So if you're in Twitch chat, you can send us a message. Just type exclamation point Q. Then your thoughts on the game or a question you have you want to pose to the rest of us. Our bot will grab it for us and send it into our queue. And if we like what you have to say, we'll talk about it on air. Uh, you can also tweet with the hashtag FRCGameSense. And our bot will also pick that up and add it to our queue as well. So, quick disclaimer. Just want to say that the thoughts and opinions expressed on this show are our own and do not necessarily reflect the views of First or its sponsors. Also, we don't take ourselves too seriously and we hope that you don't either. Have fun. And if you don't like what we have to say... Go out there and prove us wrong. All right. Well, I think the topic of discussion has got to be Steamworks, the crazy game. Uh, that the game, Well, we don't know much about the game yet, but let's show the video uh, that just got posted on YouTube and Facebook. And we'll take a look and see what everything looks like. Take it away. Oh, hold up. Oh. In a world powered by steam, a quest awaits teams of adventurers. Unite your crew. Ready your contraption. Oh boy. Okay. I'm going to talk over the rest of this here because it's it's just boilerplate stuff. But uh, let's hear first reactions from everybody. Emma, I want to hear your thoughts first. What do you think about uh, the teaser we just saw? Oh, it's fantastic and so confusing because <laughs> it gives us no information. <laughs> <laughs> Hallmark of a good teaser. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, the first time the first time I saw it, I like I just 
I didn't know I was going to be this excited for the game. And it happened last year, and I was surprised before. So you should have, you thought I would have been ready, but I'm not. I'm just, I don't know what I'm going to do until January. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we well, said that last year, that we were tortured by the fact that we knew what the game was called. And we had no idea what the rest of the game was going to be until much later in the year. So, oh, the torture. <laughs> now, now I do want to mention, you know, we're going to get into the DLC a little bit later in the show. But the DLC that was released today is labeled Pack 1. So, I believe we will be getting more of those later. Um, so, maybe that's a little bit, little something to, to help tide us over. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, we don't know anything, obviously. But I think that would be cool if we got more, for sure. Uh, One of the things we definitely do know, though, is we've got a steampunk game, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah this has been Emma, a what do you think about coming. this? It's been a long time coming, Ruth? Yeah. I mean, all I know is that, robots aside, because I have no idea what the game is, the costumes this year are going to be out of this world. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dope. <laughs> I know, I know there's one gentleman on a team up here, Oz the Osram team. He always dresses in steampunk, no matter what the theme, no matter what the year. And despite the fact that his team is kind of, uh, it's like more uh, like Wizard of Oz themed. Uh, oh. But I'm sure he is just ex happy as a clam right now. <laughs> his wow. year. This is his year, for sure, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ruth, what are your thoughts? We haven't heard from you yet. It's, it's kind of an overload, uh, honestly. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of talk going in the Twitch chat that, you know, oh, you know, it's Steam is STEM plus art, which is a big thing for me yeah. uh, with the background that I came from. So, but the thing that really gets me is the take flight. And that's just, I can't wrap my head around uh, what that's. Well, I, I mean, it's, it, I'm it's, hoping it's not a red herring, but. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say a little bit of me kind of hopes it is a red herring? Uh, because <laughs> I've never built a flying robot before. I mean, that shouldn't scare me, I guess, right? Doing new things is kind of what FIRST is all about. But there's that little part of me that's like, uh, flying robots. Yeah. Well, the thing is, everybody Hi. in chat is saying quadcopter or drone. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to inflate a blimp. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Yep. Yeah. We're just going oh, to that... have the end game is going to be crash the other team's mini hidden bird. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say too soon, Han? Is, that, is it too soon at this point? <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure wonder, video of it is lot, not in yeah. color. It's not too soon. <laughs> All right, fair enough, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, I like where you're going with that, Ty. Yeah. Is there a limited height to the field? Can we not extend past a certain height? Or well, So in 2013, we had, like, nets around the field. This year, there's just going to be a net over the field to make sure that Ooh. all your blimps don't yeah. float too high. Don't sure. float to the top. <laughs> yeah. Emma, what's your take on, on the trailer and how it, how it responds to what the game's going to be? What's your, what's your hot take on what the, what the game's going to look like based on, oh. based on four images? Give it to us. I don't know. I think that, that ramp that that robot's sitting on makes me very nervous. I think for <laughs> sure we're going to have to climb up some sort of ramp maybe to score. Yep. Um, I don't know why, but for some reason, the whole like steam engine thing plus the flight thing makes me think that maybe we're not going to have our standard carpeting, and instead we're going to have sort of like a lunacy flooring with like very little friction. I don't know. I'm getting nervous. But oh, man. We'll oh, and now I'm me. nervous. Yeah, now I'm nervous, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, you know, I got to say, I love ramps. Uh, I happen to – some of us here won a world championship with ramps. I also really don't like the Lucy <laughs> stuff, so I'm very conflicted on what the thought is. It's a little bit of, a little bit of, a little bit of good, a little bit of bad. But right. Yeah, I think we, we all want to do an air game, a flying game, but I don't know if we have the insurance for that. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair well, enough. I mean, That's the true. Stronghold this past year, there were a couple uh, defenses that you could get a good bit of air on. Oh, uh, yeah, that's But I want to point out that there are at least two other games besides last year and 2007 that had ramps. Uh, 2006, Aim High, there was that big steep ramp at the end of the game you had to park on. True. And then 2003. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yep. They were, they're, they're definitely ramps, so they're, they're, I mean, it's not unprecedented to see ramps in first, so yep. it'd be interesting to see what we get there. I, I mean, think Emma's got a good point, though. Um, you know, first has been, for the past few years, has been doing a pretty good job of bucking the trend, so to speak. Yep. For, you know, maybe like 2011 through 2014, we were kind of in this, like, things kind of got standardized, it almost was. Totally. But with, yeah, with 15, we completely changed the game. With 16, we completely changed how drivetrains are designed, basically. <laughs> so maybe... Maybe the carpet is uh, maybe it's time for its it to end its reign, so to speak. 
boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> now what am I going to do with those giant rolls of carpet that we have? Right. No. Carpet your shop. I do, I do want to, before we get too far into the game stuff, I do want to mention that um, uh, the art thing, like Ruth, Ruth said, is, is I think it's pretty cool. Hmm. I don't necessarily think that it's going to have a big part in the game, but I think First is starting to put a bigger emphasis on um, sort of branding and, um, and theming and that kind of stuff. I think standards are going to be back um, this year, just, um, just from... You know, I think a lot of people liked him last year, and it, it added a cool dynamic. Um, so I'm I'm kind of a fan of that of of bringing not necessarily into the game, but into the team, um, the idea of this you know craftsmanship and and um, artistic type of thing, and that really fits in with the steampunk thing as well with the these fantastical inventions that have so much craftsmanship in them. That's yeah, true. totally. I love that you said that, Ruth, about STEAM. Like, we talk about STEM so much, I think we forget about the arts part of it. And I'm thinking, I don't know, it might be crazy, but what if there's, like, a new award? Or maybe that has something to do with, like, mm -hmm. Dean's homework at the end of the year. Like, that's definitely a very, like, they're making sure that we really understand that STEAM is a big part of this. And, yeah. You know. Yeah, I can actually see that. That's actually a really good point, too, is that last year, I believe, the when when the Stronghold, which is now old and busted, old stuff, don't care, uh, when Stronghold <laughs> came out last year, it was after the admin manual had come out, so you already knew all of the awards. But mm. I think the admin manual is not out. Am I correct? And anybody else? I don't think it's out. So we don't. You're right. We don't know what awards we're going to get this year. There could be. There could be a new like best looking robot award, which sounds <laughs> which sounds silly, right? But there's a there's like a lot of good reason, right, for that. Like like the iPhone works extremely well and looks extremely good. And that's one of the reasons it does so well from a sales pr perspective, right? Yeah, and as first is like sort of growing and like they just revamped all their marketing last year, I think maybe they're trying to like instill that sort of like mm -hmm. that, those lessons on the students, so. Right. We'll yeah, and for, you know, we've always said make it loud, right? We're trying to, we're trying to bring first into the world, into outside the tent, so to speak. And by first giving us these tools within you know, with months to go before we even find out what the game is, it's m that much easier for us to share it to the rest of the world. Right. And I'm, that's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also, that book goes with that. Um, it's sort of like making it loud, but also making it a making it for more than just the engineering students. Like we, we all say like first is for anyone, anyone can do it, even if you're into photography or anything else. Again, the steam thing. So I think maybe some there will be something this year that will make it more more enticing to like art students or students who are interested in marketing or students who are interested in business exactly. or something else. There might just be another element that they're adding, which yeah. is so which, cool. Which, mm -hmm. which are things that every team can use and needs, right? Those are the, those are, especially on smaller teams, those are often the students that they, they can't attract, right? They don't have because they don't have them to attract them type thing. Um, and so I think this is, you know, I don't necessarily, as I said, I don't, I think it'll not necessarily show up in the game anywhere, but I like that first is is framing this from a standpoint of you know putting some extra emphasis on, hey, if you've got artistic skill, join the robotics team, you know, and and help them out because this is yeah. really cool and really valuable. Absolutely, yeah. and that that also lends a lot of credence to the fact that if you do first, you can go pro in absolutely anything you want. Mm -hmm. Bringing that art aspect really mm -hmm. will. Uh, make that even more true than it already is that's true <laughs> all right so let's 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 dive deep real quick here for a few minutes um can we show let's show up the the video we've paused it at about 13 seconds uh into the video this is the part of the video that shows all all sorts of cool stuff going on so we'll put that up on screen right now all right so so there's tons of stuff going on in this picture uh i let's let's i'm gonna go over sort of what i see first the first thing i see is i'm gonna point out that ramp that ramps there as well like we were talking about earlier. What else do you guys see in this picture? Gears for wheels. Gears for, <laughs> gears for wheels. Oh, no. Oh, no. Infinite traction. Infinite traction. <laughs> in a straight line only. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'll start it off. Look at the clock. What time is it at? It's at 1.09. 1.09. Yep. Is that all right? All right. So yep. 1.09. No idea what that is, what that significance is, but I'm sure it's important. Well, so here's my theory on this. I bet... We're going to have a game with a time limit in it. Thinking bold predictions, bold predictions. 
I'm think I'm thinking like two minutes and thirty seconds, two seconds, something like that. We've lost Francis. Mm. Francis, you, Francis, you froze. Oh no, oh, wait, that's, here. that's what happens when I mute my mic. My B. Sorry, about that. <laughs> oh, <okay>. so, <laughs> but that's going to take you have their time. I'm a little surprised you went that far to say we're going to have a time limit. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, no, either I, that or they'll just make all the game clocks analog. Oh, that's actually a much better idea. That way they don't break when the field dies. <laughs> the worst okay, fine. <laughs> so what's also cool, if you notice in the left hand on the left hand side there, we got Dean and Woody in their in their classical poses, <laughs> looking off in the distance. <laughs> so Emma, are you a, are you a, are you a Dean and Woody fan person? And if so, is that a little weird now that you've actually met them? I'm sure multiple times. Wait, would you say? Yeah, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, they're fantastic. I love their little pictures. Their little steampunky goggly things. <laughs> yeah, I love it with their goggles on. Yeah, they're I want to know what the deal is with the goggles. They're always talking about the goggles, the goggles, which obviously are safety glasses. They're like really hitting hard with wearing those goggles. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was one of those. It's kind of one of those steampunk things, right? Because like for those who don't. Yeah, for the thing like what makes apparently there's a lot of specific things about steampunk that made steampunk the way it is. And one of it is coal as opposed to like gas, diesel, or wind power or anything like that. So they wear goggles because of the dust and junk. But yeah. So maybe maybe we're gonna be maybe we're gonna be digging for coal. Ooh, that'd be cool. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I don't know what would make I wanna know happen. I wanna know what's up with this ro uh, with like the if you look at like the blueprint of the robot on the board, yeah. like the plan for the robot, it has like the drivetrain, it has three wheels on one side and two wheels on the other side. <laughs> I wanna know what that is. <laughs> This is the next. This is the kit bot, I believe. Wouldn't that be Wouldn't that be cool? We save first, save some money this year. Put five wheels in the kit instead. No, no. Oh, oh, well, yeah. Oh, that's a good go. point, Francis. Maybe they're weaning us off wheels. Maybe they're like, maybe next year we get four, and then we get three. <laughs> they Two. wean us off wheels. And then there are no wheels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then the kit bot's just a bicycle in like 2020. <laughs> you know, I mean, they used to just give a dot matrix printer, so. That's true. You never know. I don't. I don't know where I found you, people, but yeah. you come up with some crazy <laughs> ideas. I think. <laughs> I I think um, that's actually just part of like a mechanism or something that's covering one of the wheels. Oh, but okay. it's it's hard to tell. It's really small. Yeah. What's also interesting is this. This video has an authentic uh, 1970s CAD terminal. If you'll see on the right side, that person's working at, uh. full of punch cards and uh, and other accoutrements there. <laughs> Do you think they're going to take away technology from us this year? <laughs> after oh, getting geez. all the electronics last year, after the Robo Rio and everything, they're going to be like, now you get less. <laughs> <laughs> clockwork, clockwork robots. There's, there's no radio. Yeah, there's no battery. Definitely. Everybody pulls a pin at the same time, and the robots kind of go until they stop. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I all mean, right. that would... You know, Stanford drives is autonomous. Everything would be by, by punch card. And... Oh, <laughs> now that actually that actually be really cool. I think it'd be kind of neat if you could, if you like, kind of like the signaling devices they had in two thousand and eight, and the hybrid modes they've had over the years with the Connect and all that. The thing is, with the, the problem with those is that they're all kind of like not super uh, super consistent all the time. But if you had punch mm -hmm. cards, right? Mm -hmm. Literally, you just have to make sure no moths get in them. Like, and you find a bug, and you're good. <laughs> little I mean, I like bit, you drop them and they get out of order. Oh, you're screwed. Well, man. that's your. I mean, they, that's this is America. You make sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes you uh, deal with the consequences, right? <laughs> Although there are teams hey, on America. Wasn't, yeah, fair enough. wasn't Grace Hopper, uh, who the new the new field was named after, on the team that discovered the first bug? Yeah, I think actually she was the person that did it. She was the person that found mm -hmm. the first bug, literally in the punch cards. <laughs> <laughs> so they've been teasing this since last year. While, yeah. Oh boy. It's Anybody see anything time. else in here we want to touch on before we we sort of bring the thoughts around here? Well, if you look on the left side above the ramp thing, sitting on Tina on that little uh, moon gear, shall we call it? Moon. Is um, it's a looks like a little robot, a uh, a mini robot. Would you say? Mm. Oh gosh, a mini robot, a mini bot. It sure does. It sure does. We haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah, you know the thing with the mini bots is I was at first kickoff in 2011 when they when they showed the animation, and I've never heard a group of firsters cheer more 
<laughs> in that density when that when they so, when they showed off the mini bots. It's like this is so cool. This is going to be so awesome. And yeah. then uh, you know, ten weeks later, everyone was like, "Oh, please stop! No more mini bots." <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, well, I mean, when it gets to the point where you just build a bunch of mini bots and just run them sacrificially, yeah, just so you can get the points. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's old. That's old stuff. That's old and busted. We're on new hotness. We're on Steamworks, so we don't have to worry about the past. Let's I mean, uh, go ahead. Evan. Maybe there, maybe there is mini bots, but I, I think you know Ty touched on it that um, the two thousand the two thousand eleven mini bots were mainly plagued by by rules. Um, restrictions yeah. or um, and and how that interacted, um, it, the mini bot idea inherently maybe isn't quite so bad. So you know, and if there is, enter it with an open mind and and we'll see we'll see where that leads. Yeah. It also is possible that it's tethered. There is something holding it. So that's true. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see where that goes. <laughs> you guys, I just have to say one more time: if you look under the the ramp, the floor looks. Slick. I'm just gonna like yeah. say it again. <laughs> All right, you are right. I, you know, Emma, Emma I, said it first. I actually, I actually, I wasn't quite sure what you meant when you said slick floor because I thought you meant the ramp was slick. Holy oh. cow, you're actually right. That's like oil yeah, no, the whole right. or something. Like... Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Slippery floor. It's coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Detective Emma's on the case. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's um let's take a look at uh some what some folks on Twitch chat have been saying. Uh, let's a question from the crowd. Come in here. Come on. I think it's coming. Oh, here we go. We chugging. Our streaming rig is a little sleepy, everybody, so we apologize in advance if it's a little sleepy. There we go. We're back in our boxes. All right. Let's take a look at the question. All right. So this one comes from a person, uh, F. F. Marik. F. Marik 7. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it. He asked a question. Uh, is FRC going too far in emphasizing the arts in this theme? Ooh. Um, you start off, then we'll throw it to Ru. Me? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that, on that question, thought? Too far? Could you ever go too far? Um, <laughs> I think uh, nowadays, with how far technology is advanced, there's always going to be arts and arts and technology run parallel, you know. And first is getting on that bandwagon because they realize it's so important um, to steam education. So I don't, I don't think they're going too far. It's fantastic. I think if that's what they're doing, then rock on. And I think it's just great for the students. Yeah. Step, what, what are your thoughts, Ruth? You're, you're a big art person as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's I, art goes way back and. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to make a fitness analysis here. When you work out, you work everything. You don't you don't skip leg day. You don't skip arm day. You do leg day and arm day and core day. Uh, so we can kind of make that same. We can use that as a metaphor for how we work our brain. If everything we do is math and science and rhetoric and all that, and we never work the art side, the creative side of it more than what's this new robot I'm going to make, then we're really skipping leg day. You know, um, so I, you know, I think it's a very important aspect to bring back into it. It helps a lot with spatial awareness and other skills that you need to blend design yeah. and really excel in the STEM field. Mm -hmm. I think Emma had a really good point in that when she said that art, it goes right along with technology. Because if you notice, like we had paint and drawings beforehand. And as computers have come along, we've got a lot of computer generated art and computer generated music. And if we can get art into robotics, then the robots start looking cooler and looking better. They become becomes easier to address, uh, to bring people in. And then also there's a lot of things that, there's a lot of design aspects that I've learned by like talking with artists and people that don't think in like the engineering terms that were much more elegant than I would if, if I was just a pure engineer trying to do it. So I really like how I really like that they're emphasizing the arts in this theme because like Ruth said, it forces you to think in a different direction. That's true. Evan, Evan, what are your thoughts on Frank's question? Um, well, I mentioned it a little bit before, but I, I'm really I'm I like this. Um, I don't think it's going too far. You know, it's actually really not being pushed very hard at all in here, I think, from a from a 
overall standpoint. Obviously, anybody that's familiar with the STEAM acronym that adds arts into it, and um, you know, and there's a paintbrush there, etc. Um, but at the end of the day, so much of of good clean engineering is, in my opinion, art. Um, I mean, you look at how many times do we see within first, right? We see a robot that. Um, you know, 118 Robonauts or 254 Cheesy Poofs or um, 1114, you know, Symbotics comes out with and, and everybody just looks at that and it's this immaculate piece of of artwork on top yeah. of being an incredible piece of engineering. Um, so I think, you know, encouraging teams not only to think about how they present themselves, but also about craftsmanship and the robot and everything is um, it's never a bad thing. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And I gotta say, with with the theme in general, I'm I'm so down with it being a theme again. I hope that the game is as themed as Stronghold was last year, uh, because I I think it was probably one of the best decisions first ever made. Yeah. Probably next to giving the game out early, or the not the game, but the name mm -hmm. of the game out early, so people can start to think and process and use it as a tool to bring people onto their team. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Mm -hmm. I. I you know, and I think last year we were all maybe – the theme was cool. There was a lot of skepticism about whether it was going to, you know, be a little bit too hard in the paint, um, so to speak. And um, by the end of the season, almost everybody I talked to thought that First had done just an absolute fantastic job um, with integrating the theme and, and keeping it um, present but not overbearing. And so now that we have this new theme, which in a lot of ways fits better with the technology side of what we do anyway, um, I, I'm much less concerned about it kind of being overbearing. I think um, I, I have a lot of faith that, that this is going to be another great integrated theme game. Cool. All right. Well, with that, I think it's about time that we bring on our other guest. But before we do that, I want to say... Thank you so much to Emma for joining us on the show. It was a ton of fun to have you here. Uh, I guess what we'll do is we'll say, do you have any last thoughts or last words about Steam, Steam, uh, about the game so far before we say goodbye? Um, my last thoughts are just, I'm so excited we're doing another themed game because I think it gets the students really excited. We all know how I feel about the carpet, and uh, we'll see. I'm just stoked. It's going to be good. Awesome. Cool. Well, Emma, thank you again for joining us. Uh, so uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna get ready to bring Alan onto the show now. Oh, and let's see here. Uh, yep, we're gonna bring Alan onto the show. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for this little bit of a hiccup here, but Alan's computer blue screened right before he came on. So. <laughs> Buy a Mac, everybody. Ah, no. <laughs> no. That is Whoa. the second Apple product you've pimped this episode. Well, I mean, to be fair, the iPhone is actually good, right? Not that <laughs> MacBooks are terrible, but, I mean, definitely, definitely MacBooks are good. Apple, if you care to sponsor us, we're here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Not Android, right. though. No, no, no. All right, we think we have Alan back. Hopefully. Yes, Alan. Hello. 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 All right. Cool. Alan. Uh, so to introduce Alan, Alan Gregory. Alan Gregory is a mentor on Team 3847. You guys are in Texas and you're with your team right now. Is that right? Yeah. So my team's in the other room to make sure we didn't get too much noise and things, but they're over there <laughs> figuring out as much as they can about the game from what we're given so far. Um, they're running through their ideas and things. We're going to share some of those a little bit later. Awesome. Uh, That's sweet. great. So, uh, all right. So let's let's start our discussion. Now that we've sort of talked about the teaser video and the general parts of the video and all that stuff, let's oh, – well, actually, first thing we'll do, let's get Alan's thoughts because we haven't heard anything from Alan so far. So, Alan, what do you think about this, about this whole package, the DLC and the teaser we've gotten? I definitely like the way they're doing the brand stuff and giving us stuff more. Mm -hmm. um, we're able to have enough stuff where people can get it on their shirts early. You can get anything you want ready to go and print it up and everything can be ready for the season. I'm still more apprehensive about the theming than a lot of people are. Um, my big uh, so my big thing as long as it doesn't ever take away from gameplay, I don't mind it. Right, as soon as they make a decision that says we'll do this because it fits really well with the theme, but it breaks the game a little bit, I'll get annoyed. Fair enough. Fair enough. I can All see right. that. Seems reasonable. And I, I, I think that's where um, that's where I I thought last year worked well. 
um, because the game itself kind of stood alone, but the theme enhanced it. Um, so I, I'm hoping, I, and I have, I have uh, more, more faith that, that this year will be more of the same. I agree. All right, so let's take a look at the DLC pack. So for those of you who don't know, uh, along with this trailer that was on YouTube and Facebook, we first also released a DLC pack, which is a zip file with a whole bunch of images and other cool stuff that you all can use. Uh, to find it, just go to the uh, first website. Uh, it'll uh, Excuse me, not the first website. You can go to the first Facebook page, and they have a link there. Also, if you can get to the FRC blog, there's a link there. Also, if you go on Twitter, there's tons of links everywhere. I'm sure it's on Chief Delphi as well. Um, and if you want a direct link, you can go to firstinspires.org slash 2017-FRC-trailer, and that'll get you to it right away. Dash, dash teaser. teaser. Oh, excuse me, teaser. Boop. I see. I say trailer all the time. I mean teaser. Thanks, guys. All right. <laughs> we've, that, we've got it right there at the bottom of the screen. Yes, as well. right down there on the screen. All right. So uh, let's go over. Let's first go over what was in the DLC pack. Day one deal for EA, but uh, we've got logos <laughs> for the game. These are these are these look like the real logos. The whole everything has been there. We've got recruitment posters. We've got some dope ringtones. And we got some social media stuff and some wallpapers. Now, here on screen right now, you're looking at what has to be the coolest first logo they've made so far. This is the animated GIF logo for Steamworks. I think this looks fantastic. <laughs> I'm very, it's, I'm very it's excited. It's pretty sweet. I mean, you've got you've got some gears turning, um, and you've got this like wrench thing, and then there's a big old airship flying in the background. Who doesn't love airships? Yeah, I mean, there. I mean, this. If if there's any part of the whole package that makes me think that this is going to be a game that has something to do with flying, I think that this is the one. I think this is it right here. Not 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 the not the like line in the teaser that says "Take flight." Well, I mean, <laughs> last year they said rally your troops or something like that, uh, and we didn't have to rally anybody really. I mean, we kind of did, but kind of didn't. So, I don't know. I, 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 there's a part of me that's like, I can't wait to see something fly, and there's a part that's like, no, I don't think there's something that can fly. <laughs> but um, also, there's a little a the next to the steam in Steamworks. There's a little paintbrush, so that's pretty cool. Going back on the art theme that we were talking about earlier, painting the logo. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. It's like it's painting the logo. Oh my god, that's so okay. <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, I'm a little slow on the uptake. Sorry, I got a lot of things going on. My bad. Uh, let's. Uh, so, anybody else thoughts on the uh, on the uh, on the logo or the animated logo? Alan, what are you? What are your thoughts? Um, like everybody, I'm excited for the airship. I don't necessarily think we're going to be flying. I'm pretty sure they're not going to throw that one at us. Okay. Um, but there might be a flying game object of some sort, something suspended above the field, or we haven't seen anything really get up high in a little while. So, we might get mm -hmm. something up there. Okay. That's actually really cool. That's actually really cool. I hadn't right. thought so about it, that. It could be suspended on a cord. You're moving it back and forth, something like that. If it, which side of the field it ends up on at the end of the match? Who gets the points? Oh man, I remember one of the coolest things I've I we did once for a little robot competition that I helped design for is uh, we put this big object on a post, like two robot heights above everybody else, and had robots push it one side or the other, and whatever side it was on at the end of the match, they got the points for it. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool if it was like? You know, thirty feet in the air. There's this little blimp that people have to push. Yeah, I, I mean, I, you gotta remember I they gotta play them in gyms. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Fifteen, <laughs> maybe not thirty. Fifteen feet in the air. Fifteen feet in the air. <laughs> but wouldn't it be cool to see what people come up with? Like big arms, or maybe, maybe even fans to blow the blimp across the, the court. Mm -hmm. That would be kind of, kind of cool. Yeah. What if you? Well, what if you can't touch it? Right. What if mm -hmm. there's cranks and levers and things that you have to interact with to make? The blimp move one way across the field versus the other. Hmm. Okay. The, the potential for field faults. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we're thinking, we're big thinking, right? We're brainstorming a game based on a game they've already brainstormed. So, first engineering's <laughs> job is to make sure the field works. Our job is to make sure that um, are the ideas that their field has to work to are as crazy as possible. Yes. Uh. It's our job to break the fields that they have. they've designed so hard not to break. <laughs> also, if anybody even first is listening. Sorry, in advance, because <laughs> uh, it's going to break, I'm sure, whatever it is. So um, going off of uh, these moving parts and how they, uh, if they weren't blocked by the giant hat and logo, <clears throat> could could all be, like, working together to 
make this blimp go across or something? Could it be something along the lines of assembling some sort of big machine that gives you your big end game? Oh, that would be cool. Uh, yeah, like it wouldn't be as intricate as like placing gears here and there, but it could be like push block into place and click button, and then all of a sudden the end game works. I don't know, Ty. You may have a point actually. Um, the uh, the gear on the left hand side, uh, it's a um, I can't remember the term for it, but it doesn't. It goes a certain distance and then it falls back. So like it's got half the teeth. Oh, it's mm -hmm. like a can. Sure. No, it's a Geneva no. style mechanism. Oh, excuse me, a Geneva mechanism. Thanks, yes, like yeah. a clock. Uh, yeah. So as it goes up and it reaches its peak and falls back, yep. the blimp hits the apex of its path and continues. Oh so it's man, like a, it's launching it. Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. I hope I hope that's intentional. I really hope it's intentional. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say probably not intentional, but but <laughs> still very cool nonetheless. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the other stuff we got in the DLC pack. Let's take a look at some of those uh, recruitment posters. This is actually something that I'm super hyped about uh, because I think this is something that that it, it, it's it's so s simple to have a picture with the with the cool with like the game and all that stuff on it, but to have first give it out to teams, especially when school only started a week or two ago. This is like this is the perfect timing, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. this is the point when you want to be recruiting all your kids, right, or your students or other students. And I mean, I will say the the poster is a little it. Uh, the poster looks visually appealing. It is definitely going to stand out on a bulletin board on a school wall. Um, it doesn't have any robots, which may be okay, right? You don't know, Francis. That might be a robotic blimp. <laughs> <laughs> totally a robotic blimp. Robo blimp. Yes. <laughs> that would I mean you that's true. It may be a robotic blimp actually. I mean th this poster is really speaking to the to the that arts part though, right? Yeah. I mean in the whole method it's got the imagination part of it, the creativity part of it. Um, you know, which is certainly part of engineering as well. Um, but it doesn't have to be only engineering. And so I think um you know, this is really speaking to somebody who might not otherwise think of the robotics team as, again, as a, as a place for them. Um, see this poster and show up at a meeting and, you know, go from there. Right. And, you know, I'm going to throw out uh, a nice little truth bomb here. Good art inspires. True. That's true. Mm -hmm. And the, I think the other thing to note is that if you're if you're looking to recruit people for a robotics team, I think that Fair enough, the robot is like the easy part, right? If people are interested in robots and your robotics team, they're going to get that. But it's more challenging to get the broader scope of folks we're trying to get. So, Alan, were you going to say something? I think I heard you pipe up before we, we said something. Oh, yeah. I mean, just so they're piping on it very much, they even put it as the very first thing to build the team brand before they even talk about the robot in the actual tech. So they want to make sure that mm -hmm. they know people can just join the team who want to build the team brand. They might get inspired to do the engineering side, but even if they don't, if they just get inspired to do whatever their passion is, that's great as well. Yeah. All right. And, and the cool part about that, uh, sorry to interrupt, Francis. No, no, go ahead. I, I, the cool part about that is that they're giving, again, as we've said, they're giving that to us this early, right? We can't start building the robot until January, but you can start doing the branding stuff now. So this is something that those students can come in and get immediately engaged in, right? And not not be like, oh, okay, so this is a robotics team. What do I do? Wait till January. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. You know, it, it's always one of those things that, like, I, I've heard so many times, especially from people at a, on a lot of other teams that have I'm not, my team doesn't have a big school um, that there's people that want to do robots but they didn't hear about it they didn't know what was happening like Ty you got involved with first when a robot literally hit you in the hallway mm -hmm. <laughs> if that robot hit you you would not be here today yeah I'd be a cook at a restaurant if a yeah. robot hadn't practically run me over in a hallway yeah <laughs> and I think something that is Something that really sings to me, it seems very simple, but it really says to me that they put a lot of thought into these posters, yeah. is there's a nice convenient white spot underneath all of the art yeah. to put where you're meeting, who to contact, where to go, and when. And I think that, I mean, it's just like a very simple thing that could easily be left out if you get caught up in making a really cool poster, but it really goes to show that this is designed to attract people to, you know, to get people interested. Yeah. That's certainly true. 
All right. Uh, by the way, that n noise you heard in the background, that was uh, the steam whistle at uh, Allen's uh, high school going off. So that was uh, that was intentional, of course. They're ready to go. They're ready to they go. Are, they are ready for Steamworks. Yes. All right. Before we, let, before we go and talk with some folks from your team, Alan, um, let's first uh, listen to a couple of things we've got going on here. So one of the other cool parts to this DLC pack is we got ringtones. Uh, and I was so hyped to see them. I was so excited. And then I went to my phone and realized I had no idea how to change the ringtone on my phone. <laughs> but let's play a couple of them right now. Yep. First off, we got the good one. <laughs> All right. Here comes a more appropriate tone. Which says this is first priority. All right, this is we got Woody coming up stuff. again, talking about Answer cool stuff. Answer your phone. This is important stuff. Answer your phone. And this one's weird. This one's weird. Yeah, this is this is weird. This last tone, I mean, mm -hmm. a train whistle makes a lot of sense when it comes to uh, steampunk. Mm -hmm. And hearing from Woody and hearing, actually, those, those ringtones are pretty dope. I'm actually excited to kind of put one on my phone <laughs> uh, once I figure it out. Um, but a sh what sounds like a shovel digging? Oh, That's what, baby. What do you guys think? Alan, what are your thoughts on yeah. shovels? So to me, that signals some sort of we're moving a mass of something, right? Maybe a small object, something like that. If we're shoveling coal into some container, we're filling something up maybe. Um, lots of game concepts could be around that. Interesting. Okay. What do, you, what, are the rest, what are the rest of you guys think? So I've I, had this, like, desire for a game that involves tennis balls again. Uh, we haven't had one. I think we've had exactly one, right? And it was the first one. Yeah. So of I've uh, had FRC. Yes. yes. Right, right. Or or, or right. what was FRC or so prior. Yeah. I would like to see a game with just tennis balls everywhere. And to make them look like coal, you could dye them black or something like that. And then we have to shovel them up and put them into the steam engine. Yeah. <gasps> oh, I, I, I thought the same I thought the same kind of thing. Um, I was thinking softballs, but tennis balls would be cool too. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, where you have to like take just large amounts of resources, and there's no shooting, right? Because you wouldn't. Um, I, I think that would probably be highly dangerous um, mm. with FRC mm. robots and that much power shooting these things. It would be kind of but like if you, if you had to like, yeah, pick them up, you know, or, or collect large amounts, maybe by, as they said, the aforementioned levers and and cranks and things um, to actuate. You know, d d uh, repositories. Get yourself some of these units of stuff, yeah, and then go put it in uh, a larger holding place. Um, maybe it's weight based. Maybe it's uh, you know who knows. But uh, somehow that interacts with the blimp. Because <laughs> as we know, blimps are well known for digging. That's what we always. That's how I believe that's how the Panama Canal was done with with steam blimps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I do like I do th I do like that idea though. I accept the blimp part, but like I think it definitely like putting digging in there is not something, or maybe not digging. Maybe it's something else. Maybe we're missing it. Maybe it's not digging. Maybe it's shoveling, just shoveling coal like you were shoveling saying, or maybe it's like, boiler. yeah, I don't know. All right, anybody else have any thoughts on the digging sounds or the rest of the ringtones before we we bring on some folks from Spectrum? I fully intend to use that hype train whistle throughout the entire Game Sense season. There it is. Just on time, Ty. <laughs> Perfect timing. All right. Well, while we let Alan go and get some, some, some of his students, we're going to do a quick question. I think we'll do a question beforehand, and then we'll just prep it for their, when he gets here. Uh, question coming up is uh, – let's see if we have it on screen. Okay, cool. It's going to be uh, footballs. Look at the shape of the blimp, then imagine what they said about flying. Oh, footballs Ooh. confirmed, everybody. I can't. I can't really tell who says that, but uh, that would be that would be kind of cool. I mean, I think footballs have been an inside joke with a lot of people in New England for a long time. Is that right, Ty and Ruth? <laughs> so, do you think they? Do you think first does this on purpose, or are we just really that good at like finding the clues we want to find? Because every single year, it's like, 
water game or <laughs> flying game. Yes. Speaking of water balls. game, we haven't we haven't actually mentioned that, but obviously the Steam water connection oh. um, is maybe as close as we ever get to a <laughs> water game. Okay. Um, know, here, so so just stop list. talking about it, That's people. True. It's done. <laughs> yep. And I, before we talk to Spectrum real quick, I just want to say that if anyone has ever met Frank or is interacting with the chat right now, Frank may be the biggest troll in first. So I would not be surprised <laughs> at all. All right, Alan. Let's uh, let's hear from some of your kids. What? Why don't we uh, or your students? Excuse me. Why don't we have one of your guys, one of your folks, uh, introduce, introduce themselves and tell us what they think about the game? Sure. All right. So. We have most of the team here, quite a bit of it, um, but Will is going to be our spokesman for the beginning. Hello. Uh, so Hello. the idea that we really sort of fleshed out the most in our brief meeting uh, was with the ringtones. We think there's actually a reasonable hint in the ringtones. So your, your first ringtone is the train horn, which we were thinking, all right, the, the ship's horn is sort of like our last 30 seconds, you know, end of match. So the steam horn is going to replace that. So that's our first hint, end game. Second, second hint, second ringtone. Woody says, this is first priority. What are first priorities? Inspiration, cooperation, <laughs> GP, all those big buzzwords you think about. Third, third hint, I uh, get out your phone, get pick up your phone. This is really important. We're thinking audience interaction is here to stay, and it's going to be with an app. All right. <laughs> Last hint is the coal. We think that going back to the the first and the second ringtone, there's going to be some sort of end game. Uh, we're going to need to move a lot of something that's going to be themed as coal. Uh, and that's going to be your cooperation points as well, because you know you get your buzz, you get your GP cooperation. That's what's first. Uh, that's first goal. <laughs> that's the end game. Last thirty seconds. That's the steam horn. I think oh. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Wow. They just they just, they just unloaded just, more on us than we did the entire first forty minutes. Of <laughs> <laughs> they, they've had a lot of time to think about this. <laughs> We have like a full notebook, like an entire page just like of the random ideas. Wow. I like these guys. They're yeah. good. They're good. Well, that is a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so, so I like I think those are all I think that you're actually spot on. And I hadn't even thought about audience interaction. That actually you guys make a huge cool point that we forgot because basically every single offseason got rid of uh, audience selection. But uh I think I think that it may have it may have solved the problem that first was trying to solve a little bit at least at least getting the audience involved right well and I, I actually really like their idea of doing it as an app so if there isn't an app and audience selection first pay note because I think this is actually a decent idea um, one of the biggest complaints about audience selection was um, I mean there were kind of two of them one is it was a big interruption um, to everything and the, the flow of everything and yeah it was a break but it was also um, you know, kind of an interruption, and the other was that um, it wasn't it wasn't objectively fair because it was kind of relying on somebody weighing two groups of people and depending on where they were, et cetera. And you could solve both of those with an app because it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a live interaction, right? It can just be as things come in, and then boom, here's a cutoff. Um, and uh, and there's there's an objective way to measure that. So I think that's actually a pretty cool way um, to to do that. So so kudos yeah. to to Spectrum. That's yeah. that's a great idea. Now I got to ask. So here's here's the one thing that I think may make an app not necessarily good. Um, all you guys out out there at Spectrum, raise your hand if you have a smartphone. Okay, maybe this was a poor choice. <laughs> maybe okay, you've all got smartphones kids these days with their smartphones but uh, let's let's remember as well that not everybody has a smartphone not every student has a smartphone especially when you look at the broad spectrum of students across all sorts of different uh communities so there is kind of that but maybe if we have like a i mean we have a laptop to set up wpa keys that doesn't do much after the fact we just have a voting station or something yeah i don't know that would be kind of cool so, all right, how about this? Spectrum guys, what are your thoughts on – we had Emma on. I'm not sure if you guys are watching. Actually, I know you guys are watching because everybody watches Game Sense. Uh, but um, we talked about a slippery floor. What do you guys think about that? Are you hyped for that? Are you scared of that? Are you uh, – do you think that's e even remotely possible? What do you guys think? Go ahead. Um, it, yeah, like, it, it was something that someone had brought up, but 
we don't know what we think of it, really. Yeah, um, we're thinking maybe like a possibility of a lunacy redux, which, would, which may or may not be interesting. But since like you know it's kind of steam, there may be something involved like coal, like trains, and you know dumping coal, like coal into the trailers or something similar, some variant of that perhaps. So actually, that's that's a kind of a good point. I, if you guys ever watch Thomas Tank Engine, there's always uh, the train has the front part and the back part that has all the coal in it. Maybe we're towing around tenders and we're giving coal to people. I don't know. That would be <laughs> oh, no. But no, it's like it's the 2009 Redux, but instead of everybody having one trailer, one bad luck robot draws a short straw and gets all the trailers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chug it. Chug. Oh, actually, you know what? You know, this is what, what they should have done for Lunacy. We just strap all the robots together and now they are a train. Oh my god! Oh my god! I blew it. I just blew it open, guys. We just figured it out. Frank, Frank, I'm sorry. I just gave away the game. We're building the train with the robots. Wow, that's crazy. Oh my god! I can't wait. It'll be great. And, and, and I'm no longer excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fine. Oh dear. So, how about one? Another question for the spectrum guys uh, and girls too. I say guys in a non-gender specific way. But um, what are your thought? What? So we we've talked about basically every aspect first except the human player how do you think the human player gets involved with this game with with given the information we have and our our sort of pie in the sky ideas all right so like um we've been thinking in terms of like game pieces like coal is a big one like we're coming we're going all com completely and only off of that one ringtone <laughs> but <laughs> basically we think that coal is a major game piece um and perhaps the human players is going to be like shoveling that coal in <laughs> at, you know at like steam so you got a big like open hopper on the robot and they just like you know shoveling some some coal and send the robot on its way. Yeah, that's true. Or maybe the robots are coal powered now. That would actually, although you know, this whole coal thing kind of strikes me as weird, considering first like the Lego League games and like Recycle Rush. <laughs> oh no, um, yeah, you know, I forgot. It clean coal. It's got to be clean coal. That makes sense. <laughs> and the the, uh, the twenty ten Trident looks sort of like a shovel, so you may have some oh, way to yeah. shovel balls back in. That's well, true. and there was also the, I mean, going back to lunacy. Why do we keep going back to lunacy? This is a terrible idea. Um, <laughs> but the human players did have those little, like, um, trash grabber things. So so there is precedent for human players having um, implements yeah. with which to work. That's true. All right, so uh, I've just got late-breaking news actually coming in from, uh, from the chat we have behind the scenes here. Um, apparently in one of the posters which one is it ty is it the it's the high res one the high res the... wallpaper yeah in the yeah. wallpapers folder it's the high res one the yeah. largest one in terms of file size which uh, which which for uh, while we're bringing this up for uh, for all the audience this is the high res version of that image um from the teaser of the workshop with the robot um so it, it's pretty sweet yeah apparently um we have confirmed that there is a submarine in this photo. I think we're bringing it up now. We've, it's from Blown Up. There it is, everybody. Submarine. It has got the first logo emblazoned on it. I mean, I think it's a submarine, although it's weird that it's floating in the air and nowhere near the water. Maybe it's a steam submarine, but maybe you guys ask for too much when you ask for a water game. Spectrum, give us your hot take on submarine. <laughs> um... Yeah, they're throwing this one at them. I don't yeah. think they're ready for summer. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I, mean, like, we, I mean, everyone's in okay. the game confirmed jokingly, but now it's now it's maybe an actual thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna it, see. Can it be powered by coal? Yes. No. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and and I, I do want to say that um, I was actually incorrect. This is from the other high res photo that I hadn't looked at yet. Oh, okay. See, that's so that's why it was a surprise two, to us. Two high res photos. Yes. So a little tidbit that I also noticed is all of these are labeled with scene one. So maybe we're going to get multiple scenes throughout the DLCs between now and kickoff. Ooh. That was actually, that gives me an interesting idea. Going back to the that clock on the wall in the workshop that was um, at 109, um, and so back in 2006 we had like periods, the offense and the defense period. Oh. What if what if we have something like that again, where um, maybe it's not a period change, but it's a you know at, at a one minute and ten seconds um, 
is like, I mean, what if it's like an extended end game almost, right? That half the match you, you you've got one thing and then it switches over to this other thing. That'd be we'll cool. We'll find out when, when more we DLC. A, we got a Spectrum guy who wants to say something. I don't forget. You're not Will, but that's all I know. Who your name is. Um, you actually noticed that in the teaser, there's like there's clocks in the background of the workshop, and they're at different times. So we came up with the idea that maybe there's some like time limited, time specific things that are, mm. I mean, like more time specific than an average spec, like an average FRC match. Like you start something and you have to do some other task limited within amount of time, time, amount of time. You, like complete that. Like that's task. a great idea. Maybe cool. only certain robots are enabled at a certain time, certain point in the game. Ooh, that's a few, that, that would that'd be interesting, but I think I feel that's a few moment though, right? Like if your robot's not running, you're like, hey, robot, yeah. oh, we're waiting, blah, 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 right? But that would yeah, be. Yeah, well, you know, we were talking about an underwater game like 30 seconds ago. Okay, so. you know, I, I can see that point. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I, Lord, I apologize. All right, you got, you got to be there. You know, I, I, I think it would be kind of cool as if maybe you had like another part in the sky idea is if you had um, like robots starting the match like the match is always running right like there's the match never ends and robots come in and out and there's different timers for different robots i don't know how that would work but i think that would be staggered cool. start staggered start shotgun start like we start the match at 9:45 we end it at 8 p.m. i think that'd be kind of cool <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay actually we're we're getting some i have some no idea what to do with that yeah. <laughs> so we're getting some. Yeah, how much of a logistics, logistics nightmare that is. <laughs> I mean, kind of, yeah. Think of the queuing, Francis. Yeah, uh, well, okay. Think <laughs> of the queuing. Fine, fine. I won't lose my idea. All right. So um, let's do let's do a couple things here first. First off, if you weren't, if you didn't know, Frank is actually in the Twitch chat. And he did say that there is going to be a uh, second DLC pack. He did not give a date as to when that would come out, but there will be a second set of DLC coming out. Um, he did not list the price. I'm going to assume it's free. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sure it's free. Um, he also mentioned that uh, the clock was actually at 107, which happens to line off with kickoff. 107, January 7th. Ooh, boy, pff, mind blown. That was, right. wait, wait, wait. Frank said that? I believe so, yeah. Okay. So, so that tells me two things. But most importantly, it also it tells me that they are paying attention to where the clock hands are. So every other clock hand can be significant. All right. Be on the watch for every clock. Literally, the watch for every clock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got one more comment from the folks on the stream. Let's have everybody go over it and see what they think about it. We'll start with the Spectrum, with the folks from Spectrum in just a second. Uh, we're going to put it up on screen right now. The question is, uh, people were wearing red Blue and red, but all the flags that they held up were gold, question mark. Ooh. Spectrum, give us your thoughts. Flags? Um, standoff like last year. Standoff? Standoff. So there's, oh, there's some oh, ideas about standoff. standards happening. Um, we mentioned that already. Actually, wait, maybe they're, like, we were thinking about this since, like, they were, um, last year in the teaser, they were talking a lot, a lot about um, teamwork and, like, working together, that whole, the whole cooperation, co cooperation type thing. But in this one, they've only shown, like, one team working in the workshop, right? So maybe, maybe there's going to be a shakeup of, like, how alliances are formed, like, how teams compete. So maybe there is something, like, involving a large like, group team to mm. even more of that cooperation aspect together. I mean, the other thing is that um, 2015, the cooperation totes, the auto totes that where the cooperation totes were yellow. Oh. So maybe gold is just signifying that that's you know there's there's the cooperation element there um, with the gold flag. Interesting, Ruth or Ty, what are your thoughts on flags? Go with Ty first. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of in terms of flying, the first thing that came to mind was. Um, trying to raise something high as fast, like be the first person to raise something high, not send something to the top of a pole high. That's very different. Um, you know, like like a, something that's a blimp, and when you pull a string, it looks like it's flying, and that's the flying part of the game. Um, so my first, so maybe that could be like raising raising a big gold flag. You um, fly flags. Yeah. Although if yeah. first manages to do raising the flag two game two years in a row, then. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing during the off-season. <laughs> so, Ruth? back in the day, 
before we had bumpers and before we used lights to tell what alliance you were on, we used flags. And you had a one foot long half inch PVC pipe that was your flag holder. What if they're bringing back flag holders and wait for it, capture the flag as part of the game. Whichever alliance possesses the most yellow flags at the end of the game gets extra points. There you go. I like that. I'm a huge fan of that. I love capture. I love, I've always wanted to do a capture the flag robot game. I, I really hope that's the case. All right. So we're about out of time for our show today. So we're going to go around the horn and give a, a quick last thought from every single group here. First off, Alan and Team Spectrum, what are your final thoughts? Alan, go first, then we can have the rest of your crew talk. All right. I think we're clearly themes are here to stay. They're going to do it as much as they can. And hopefully first can tie it all together as well as they did last year and give us a great game that we can all be excited about. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we're... Um... I think there is going to be a like a lot bigger like cooper uh, cooperation aspect. Like things are going to be shaken up a little bit in terms of like teams working together a lot more than they used to. So, all right, cool. Let's ship it over to Ty. Then we'll go with Evan, then Ruth, and then me. I'm just I am incredibly pumped. I think that there's all kinds of really cool things you can do with a steampunk theme and robots, and I really really appreciate the fact that they're. But they're really just giving teams the tools uh, and to help with recruiting. That's like the, that's my favorite part of this whole this teaser reveal. Go ahead, Evan. Blimps, I love blimps. <laughs> I love blimps. I just can't get over that we've got a big old blimp. So, so that's my favorite thing. I have no idea if it'll have an aspect in the game or not, but I really hope so because who doesn't love giant blimps? All right, you heard it here first. Fifty-eight hundred three builds the blimp. Uh, <laughs> Introducing blimp. 5803, used to be called Apex, now called the Dirigibles. <laughs> Dirigibles. <laughs> Do what? Ruth, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Final thoughts on uh, on the game teaser? You know, I really like the emphasis on art. You know, I, I keep hearing back to that. I really, 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 really love the emphasis on art. Um, I think it's going to give us a visually spectacular set of teams this year, apart from just what we normally have, which is impressive already. Yeah. My final thought is that uh, I am actually a little disappointed because uh, we have to wait a long time for the next uh, for the next DLC and like four months until kickoff. Uh, is it four months? Is it f It's four months. Oh my goodness. I have no... That's a lot of days. It's a long it is, time before. Uh, 21 weeks to the day, Francis. Ooh. To, uh, to um, not kickoff, but bag day. Oh, to bag or day. Or stop build. Oh, 21 okay. 21 weeks to the day. You're already looking ahead. <laughs> uh, so I'm just I'm just excited, as Ty was saying, but I'm also like, oh, I want to see it now. So I can't wait to see more from what First has to offer. So with that being said, I want to say a few thank yous. First off, thank you to the rest of the Game Sense crew for joining us. Thank you to Stephanie for working behind the scenes, doing the directing all day long, all evening long. Thank you to Alan and to all the kids, all the students on Spectrum. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We're extremely happy to have you guys on. You guys had some baller ideas. So better watch out, guys. Spectrum's coming on top this year. I'm just going to call it right now. <laughs> Hot takes coming from Francis. Also, big thanks to Emma, Emma, Emma Dumont for coming on the show. We're super hyped that you came on. We're super happy to have you. Uh, she's waiting in the background. Uh, so thank you for joining us once again. Emma, hello. Thank you. Um, and, of course, thank you to everybody at first. Um, for uh, doing all this hard work because this this sure as heck ain't easy uh, and certainly getting everything ready before the season is even started uh, and getting it to a point where they can show us the game 21 weeks before we have to put our robots in the bag is uh, a lot of a lot to ask for for any group of engineers so thank you guys engineers and non-engineers so thank you all for doing that two last pieces of business one is that uh, GameSense is going to have behind the lines. We're coming back again this year for season number three. Stay tuned for information about that. Follow us here on Twitch so you can watch all of those great episodes about uh, learning all the cool things uh, that for mentors around first have brought to us. Alan was a guest on Behind the Lines. He did a great job. Um, also, this weekend is Chessy Champs. That's an off-season event held by Team 254 in San Jose, California. Uh, we are going to be there live doing live analysis, breakdown of all the matches. We're going to have interviews with the teams we're going to put through the rest of the day. We're going to have instant replay with the John Madden Telestrator with the big yellow lines that point stuff. We're wicked excited to be bringing all this cool technology into the broadcast drama first. So definitely check it out. 
It's going to be here live on FRC Game Sense this weekend, starting at 9 p.m. Uh, 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, if you want to catch it, don't want to miss it, follow us here on Twitch. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Everything is at FRC Game Sense, uh, and we will. Uh, you won't miss a single thing. So on behalf of everybody that was part of this program, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you later on. See you this weekend if you're watching. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.